Dear students, welcome to today's class. Here is the newest assignment, the new dashboard we will be creating as a part of this uh, lecture. Just to uh, calibrate your eyes, uh, just displaying, this is the exact dashboard we will be creating. It's for social media, LinkedIn. And I'm sure uh, either you are a heavy user of LinkedIn uh, currently, or maybe in the near future, you'll be using it much more, especially uh, to uh, display your resume, skills, projects, and while you're looking for jobs and so on. Even this is that one important platform that a lot of modern age recruiters are using. Lots of companies are getting into it. So uh, this is a fun assignment. So, and uh, this is a technically like uh, the dashboard we'll be creating. And again, there are lots of content. We'll be starting with our basic uh, header, that is the title. Then these six KPIs using uh, the uh, cards, uh, card visuals, followed by area chart, horizontal bar charts, then a fun word uh, cloud. Uh, yeah, I'll be showing you how to download it and use it. Uh, followed by donut chart and a systematic uh, bar chart. Again, these two are taking a form of Pareto chart, uh, meaning uh, these are uh, prioritizing. Yeah, showing the highest first, and as you go down, uh, it kind of decreases. So technically, this is the fun dashboard we will be creating. Let's go to our canvas page. So yeah, this is uh, some content I have added. So like I said, uh, yeah, this is very fun. And again, uh, there is a lot of technicalities about DAX we will be learning. Uh, let me explain you. Like I said, uh, six in this dashboard, we'll be creating these six visual cards, area chart, clustered column chart, bar chart, word cloud. And here is a snapshot uh, I've shown. But again, this is the app that uh, I explained in my video how to get it because technically it is not available in a standard visualization. But again, uh, I will say Power BI is very strong. Lots of apps, lots of ad hoc important uh, as needed apps are available. So this is an example that I've shown how to search for uh, an app or a visual called as Word Cloud, how to get it, download it and start using it. Yeah. So this is one here snapshot. So again, it's called Word Cloud. And again, you don't have to do anything as of now. Uh, in my video, it is systematically explained. Then the next part is very important. Uh, this is a dash, uh, sorry, DAX code to create a simple date table. Yeah. So again, for you, you don't have to like create your own code. And that's the trick I want you to understand moving forward from here is uh, for lots of standard tables. There are uh, readily available. These codes are readily available. So again, uh, this code is exact code has been taken from this website. But again, for your assignment, when the when the when you are down into the right part of the assignment, again uh, the video explains very well. You just have to copy paste this entire thing. Yeah, again it starts with this DAX table. Uh, day, yeah, date table equals to copy this entire thing. Right click, copy, and paste it at the right location. Uh, one thing I have noted clearly noted over here is in this uh, code over here, the start date is 1st January 2020 and the end date is 12th, uh, sorry, 31st December 2024. Again, this part can remain the same, but depending upon how your data is, you might have to change your date. And again, if you are using my LinkedIn uh, data set, uh, then yeah like uh, you will have to use 2011 1 1 2011 but yeah just uh, keeping you informed and again uh, don't, don't think too much as of now when the time is right you will exactly see this code uh, in my video as well so just remember copy this entire thing and just uh, this is for your information this code is taken from this website and again i want you all to know that a lots of standard codes are already available on uh, yeah, like uh, on, on uh, the internet. So in this specific code is, let me show you, let me scroll down to the right location. Yeah, ceiling. This is the code that is available. Yeah, I mean, so there are lots of, this Data Wolf is a very good website. There are a few more. If you want, I can add the, uh, those uh, links also as we go. Uh, the next part is, uh, yeah, like, oops, yeah. Maybe I should have left space. I will edit that. So again, uh, this link below shows the importance of social media. So again, uh, here is a, a Wikipedia link of what uh, is the importance of uh, social media. So technically, it's uh, 
also called as social media monitoring, meaning people are continuously monitoring the activities for lots of insights, lots of important information they are looking for. So again, as per Wikipedia, it is a process of gathering and analyzing data from different networks like Facebook, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, and a lot more. The part of the social media analytics is called as social media monitoring or listening. Uh, oftentimes, yeah, this is the process explained and you identify the right data, right structured data, you do the data analysis, make the necessary decisions and make the changes and continuously keep monitoring. Yeah, uh, something more again, this is the basic one, uh, like yeah, from Wikipedia, something more on the same topic. And again, here I want you guys to do this search. Yeah, so for that, please uh, click on this link. And then the, again, this is a hands on experience for you. To indirectly, this is again, uh, they call it as a prompt engineering or prompting uh, in chat GPT. So, again, this is a prompt that you are supposed to either type in or copy paste. Go to, uh, yeah, please go to chatgpt.com, uh, yeah, uh, this page, and then exactly copy this prompt that I have given. What is social media analytics dashboard? And, uh, oops. Yeah, here you go. You should get an answer, something like this. So indirectly it explains. So again, this is a learning experience for you also. You know, in the future, lot, uh, they expect, I mean, I expect a lot of my students to be good at utilizing uh, chat GPT. Uh, maybe wherever it is uh, well, like necessary or important or uh, as long as it is legally allowed within your coursework or uh, as you go in your workplace. Again, at workplace, uh, there is a lot of hype going and a lot of people are increasingly using chat GPT. So this is my way to help you get some hands on. Yeah. So please type in this, uh, what is social media analytics dashboard? And you should get an answer like this. So a quick glance over here. So again, as per this chat GPT, this definition, it is telling uh, this dashboard, social media analytics dashboard is a visual interface that consolidates data and metrics from various social media platforms into one centralized place. It allows users such as marketers, analyst business owners to monitor track analyze their social media performance in the real time or over a specific period the key features are here yeah, you try to identify uh, and track the engagement matrix rich and uh, reach and impressions uh, follower growth yeah whether your follower growth and so on for example in my case i mean there is no follower i mean i wasn't tracking for those but again um, connections here yeah, versus the totally uh, companies for which my total connections work for and then how many uh, invitations I received this year, 2024, how many invitations I said uh, I sent out this year, as well as my skills endorsement. Yeah, so uh, like I uh, list down what are the skills I have in my social media, I mean, uh, LinkedIn profile, and there are 340 endorsements given this year. And here is the detail, like my first highest among these 340 48 again when i select this it says 48 are for my lean manufacturing so 48 uh, professionals know that i have used uh they are aware of my skills maybe for my usability coming from industry second one is engineering so it looks like there are 39 of them they uh yeah kind of endorsed me for engineering looks like there are 34 hand who endorsed me for industrial engineering root cause analysis 21 uh, process engineering 19 six sigma 18 so these are kind of confirming that i have these skills and so on so yeah going back this is what it meant so again uh, reach and impressions follower growth in my case it was endorsement growth uh, sentiment analysis post performance and whatnot there are a lot of things that can be done so this uh, should be an answer uh, you, you should be getting when you do your own prompting. Uh, next one is again, uh, open a new chat GPT and copy paste or type this importance of social media analytics and insights. And then you should get uh, an answer something like this. It says it helps uh, you to in understanding the audience engagement. So same here also again, if I go my, uh, to my own uh, LinkedIn analysis over here. So here like, uh, like blue is messages received versus uh, this dark blue is messages I sent. So it looks like in uh, starting from, so this is for uh, the life of my account, which is starting from 2011 until now. So it's like 13 years. Uh, I have sent out around 5,000 messages, uh, contacts and so on. And I have received almost 1250. Yeah, uh, number of messages. And this is the breakdown, 80% sent, 20% received and so on. And some more insights is like my total connections I have. 
this word cloud shows uh, by you know the, the bigger the size meaning uh, the more the number of positions so if i hover my mouse over here looks like the highest post of all my connections are manager yeah so again when i hover my mouse looks like 714 of them are managers and this is the breakdown my second highest is i think what yeah let's see i think direct directors so this is 700 my directors uh, friends or connections are 530 Uh, of or maybe chief uh, i don't yeah i don't know maybe operations or is it 398 then chiefs are 315 executives are 256 ceos are 244 engineers are 400 uh, yeah officers are 234 founders are 263 and so on so these are some additional insights i get right away and again uh, i can always linkedin to my live or maybe i can update this um, data file that i have on a daily or weekly basis and based on that these numbers will change yeah so that's the power so that's exactly uh, explained over here so that's the importance of linkedin analysis understanding the audience engagement content performance demographic insights optimize uh, person branding if my goal is to get more likes more re reactions or get more skills and go to, uh, get more endorsements and so on maybe i will have a focused efforts on those and if i am an advertiser or if i am like yeah i will be doing a solid advertising and tracking maybe uh, the people viewing the advertise versus the sales i will try keep a uh, close uh, eye on that so those kind of things uh, yeah that then tracking company page growth and leading gen yeah, lead generation conversion improving your ad campaign i think in the previous uh oh sorry the next assignment uh, which is coming has this about yeah uh, campaign 1 campaign 2 campaign 3 and campaign 4 then benchmarking employee advocacy tracking and so on so you can do a lot so yeah that's it next chat G gpt prompt and the last one is again open a new chat gpt copy or uh, yeah enter this importance of linkedin analytics oh sorry i think we saw that uh yeah and then yeah, i think yeah, this is uh, what it means so yeah second one means so importance of social media analytics and insights so again understanding your audience better measuring the campaign better and so on so yeah this is the basic and we quickly scroll through the wikipedia um, page explaining uh, social media analytics and also some chat gpt answers and again this is on purpose i want you guys to get some hands on uh, chat gpt practice as, uh, at, and you know some hands on prompting prompt engineering because it always gets better yeah uh, next part is the data file folder hey man this is the fun part yeah so currently i have so this file folder it has zip folder let me open and show you but again uh, this zip folder is uh, for my linkedin page yeah so this uh, has all the yeah data that i used so again this is the folder so again i downloaded it like 5 uh, days ago so again if i open these are all the files oh sorry it's still opening it's opening on my other window So yeah, these are the different sub files that got uh, downloaded. Again, these are still in my zip folder, but again, it has uh, ad targeting, certification. I have coach, messages, company follows, connections, contacts, and so on. All lots of files there are. And again, I am supposed to extract these into, and then once I extract, I'll get these files, all these files, which I will be uploading some of them. uh so that i can build these and this is a fun so again in this case in this dashboard uh i have multiple of these yeah so again unlike the previous ones where we i where uh, we we only utilized uh, one table or two tables same thing in the very first uh, dashboard we created we utilized like five of them in this case also we will be utilizing 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 yeah? total totally different seven tables and among this date is that table we will be creating using a code and that's the code that i have copied here yeah? so again i won't be spending a lot of that uh, time on this at this point later on it's very well uh, explained in the video so again coming back so again uh, you will be opening that zip file extracting the data to exactly the same folder which i have named it uh, power bi dashboard linkedin analytics maybe you can also uh, do the same but yeah there are lots of files so we'll be hand picking some of them for uh, that will be adding into the dashboard or else i will show you how to get this yeah so this is the fun part and again once you learn you the infer knowledge will stay with you forever yeah so for that i am going to open a new tab and going to type in as l i n k e d linkedin it will take to my own linkedin page 
and here like yeah this is my landing page i will go to this me expand this and then uh, within this yeah you see i have my you know some information view profile and below that i have account and within account i have settings and privacy i'll click on settings and privacy then on my left hand side pane i will see this data privacy yeah so i'll click on this data privacy as soon as i click uh yeah you know the content will be displayed over here and within this you see or uh, the first one says how linkedin uses your data uh, manage your data and activity and here is the case like the main uh, the tab of our interest that says get a copy of your data so i'll click on this once i click on this a window like this appears uh, again i can hand pick which are the different uh, you know the sub files that I want. In this case, I selected all. For you, so if you're doing it for your own, I recommend uh, go with this. That says download larger data archive, uh, include including connections, verifications, uh, contacts, account history information, so on. And uh, then once you do this, uh, please click on the request archive. And again, I'll tell you, you want to be getting this archive immediately. It takes uh, LinkedIn about anywhere from like 10 to 30 minutes to uh, get you get it the archive ready. Yeah. So again, you have to wait if you're doing for yourself. But again, I will highly recommend this is a fun activity. Please do it, do it for your own data. You will enjoy. Maybe, uh, well, one thing you, uh, you might see is, you know, I have been using LinkedIn for 13 years. And when I was in Slumberjay, uh, I have done lots of uh, presentations all across different states in the USA. So and that's why I have lots of connections. So that's how I made most of. Maybe you might have 30, 40, 50, 100, 200 odd uh, connections. That's totally fine. Well, there is nothing right or wrong, nothing less or more. But once you start with your own, it's fun. And then you can always build on top of it. Yeah, so coming back, please. Uh, yeah, so again, I will describe how I reached over here. Go to home page. Within the home page, go to uh, yeah, expand this me. And then within account, select settings and privacy. Then go to your data privacy. Then the second tab here that says get a copy of your data. Click on it. A window like this appears. Select on download larger data. And then here you see here it says your data will be ready in about 24 hours. But usually, uh, like my experience says it's yeah, 10 to 30 minutes is max. If not, yeah, just wait. Uh, you can you can uh, keep this window open or else you should be remaining an uh, sorry you're receiving an email stating that your uh, archive data is ready for download yeah so once you select this i'm going to select uh, say on click on request archive awesome yeah it goes into this request mode so we'll send you an email when your data is ready so again, yeah, this is, again, it's grayed out. I have no other option to wait, yeah. So again, uh, just keeping you informed, uh, once you click this, wait for like, yeah, some time until uh, either this is uh, active, it will say, yeah, download the data, or you should be remaining uh, receiving an email saying your um, yeah, data is the ready to download. Yeah, then just, just click and the data will be downloaded, yeah. And once that's done, well, for me, I'm just going to close it. Once that's done, uh, yeah. Once the data is downloaded, it will be downloaded in something like this basic LinkedIn data export. And uh, on the yeah, you'll, the, the date will be the date on which you requested. So, yeah, this is the yeah, typical file name. And then you open it using a zip folder. And these are the, all the contents. Uh, yeah, maybe for some of these might be different for you. Maybe I was using these receipts and positions and so on uh, some most of them will be same but uh, don't be surprised if some of them are different uh, yeah it, it's nothing wrong then once you open this zip file extract it and this is how i extracted in this folder power bi dashboard dash linkedin analytics and these are all the files i received once i received then uh, technically i am ready to uh, build uh, yeah build my power bi dashboard yeah so for that maybe let, let's let me close this yeah i'm going to save it so then uh, once your data is downloaded, extracted, uh, well, this time instead of uh, going into detail and understanding, because I have shown uh, all these activities very well within the video. So again, we won't be opening uh, each of these files uh, as at this point, uh, when we do the uh, load and transform, I'll be explaining the content, yeah? Next.
I request you all to open a new window of Power BI. And it will take a few seconds to load. Let's start with a blank document. And we know our files are CSV files. So I'm going to get data text slash CSV. First, I'm going to start with connections. So among all the files, I'm going to select connections and say open. Power BI will start doing its own thing. And this navigator window will appear. And here we know the data isn't perfect. It's not ready to be processed in Power BI. So I'm going to say transform data. Power Query Editor window like this will open. The very first thing, as you have seen before, the first three rows aren't of any high value to us. So what I'm going to do is, you see the, this tab over here within the reduce rows. I'm going to say remove rows. I'm going to expand this. Remove top rows. Click on it. A window like this will appear. It is asking me specify, specify how many rows to remove from the top. I'm going to say three. I'm going to say OK. Awesome. So those three rows have been removed. Next, you see the very first row. First name, last name, URL, email address, company, position, and connected on. So technically, this should be my header here. Yeah? So that's what I'm expecting for all these columns. This should be my header. So for that reason, I'm going to uh, click anywhere over here. Then you see within your transform, you see use first row as header. So I'm going to expand this. And I'm going to say use first row as headers. Yeah, so there are two options. I'm going to say the first one, use first rows as headers, clicking on it. Awesome. Yeah. So again, you, you can see the headers have been shifted. It has went uh, one level up and these are my headers now. Awesome. Another important step completed. Next thing is you see uh, this email column. Uh, well, there are not a lot of emails filled out, although there are some. So technically, I do not need them. So I'm going to select this and going to say remove columns. Yeah. Once I do, yeah, it's removed. So now I have first name, last name, URL company, this specific connection works for position they have and lastly connected on. So I'm going to change this connected on to date. Press enter. Awesome. So this is also completed. Now I'm going to say close and apply. Awesome. It will do its loading and you, see, you can see in the data pane, some things are being formulated. Great, it has been loaded and now I can see this data connection uh, sheet, uh, connection table and these are the columns, uh, subsequent company, date, first name, last name, position and URL. So now let's go ahead and save this file here. Yeah? Let's use our standard way. So I'm going to say save as. Currently, it's in insights. I do not want it in insights. So I'll say a recent or browse this device. I'm going to select LinkedIn Analytics and let me name it as yeah, Power BI dash board dash L I N K E D I N A N A L Y T I C S Analytics. Awesome. Yeah, so this will be my title. And again, like I'm just following our standard terminology. Uh, all our uh, dashboard title starts with Power BI dashboard, dash, and the details. So I'm going to save this. Awesome. Yeah, it has been saved. Let me change this also. Let's say LinkedIn Analytics. Awesome. So this title has been, or this sheet name also has been changed. Uh, also, let's save it again. Then let's see. Looking great, looking great, awesome. Next, after the connections table, now we want to create a date table. So let's go to this table tools and add this new table. Let's click on this. So our goal here is to create a new table. 
uh, called as date and we want to uh, link these dates that uh, through this table uh, with the dates within our connections yeah so that's our goal so uh, this is a very important learning lesson for you uh, several simple expressions like date and uh, multiple more which will, which i'm going to teach you in upcoming weeks so there are lots of codes already available online here yeah? so again here also instead of getting into detail of coding because the goal of this class is not to learn coding but uh, it's more of how to use the code and run our power bi so all i did was i opened a new window yeah let's let's start by doing that Yeah, so let's open and I'm going to type say uh, code to create simple date table in DAX Power BI. Yeah, so code to create simple date. And remember, uh, make sure you use this word simple date table because that's what we are going to add. So yeah, this is uh, something I'm typing in my uh, search bar. Say code to create simple date table in DAX and pressing enter. Awesome. So there is this first website datawolf.com. And it is telling me there are three ways to do it. Yeah, so I'm going to click on this. Awesome. So within this, let's see the first code. This looks like this is the simplest of all. I am that's not the format I'm looking for, but this is yeah. Let's see. Let's see the content of this. A DAX table add calendar. Okay, there is a start date, there is an end date, and it will have several columns, uh, year, quarter, quarter number, month, month name, month short name, month short name, data sort, day time, detail, day number. Yeah, this looks something that I'm wanting to. Next one is, let's check the next one. Yeah, so DAX data table, date table, calendar, year, month, month name, short name, month, uh, year number plus month number. Okay, so this is the format, no. Looks like this is too much and this is too long so probably i will pick this type so again this makes our life very easy and this is another important thing i want you all to know as well uh, because uh, uh, this is very readily available and there are uh, lots of coders and also power bi users your yeah, data analysts also lots of ai practitioners who are using data on heavy scale uh, they are using this practice yeah so just go to this website or you know simple search whichever uh, website looks uh, good to you uh, i highly trust data wolf so in this case this is something that i will pick yeah so again i'm going to copy this entire code given over here and there are some tips also given uh, by them see open a power bi dashboard that's what we are going to do then go to the tab modeling new table that's what we have we have been doing and in the formula bar enter this and later on they are seeing that we can change this name and we can change this uh, start date also which is yeah which I, uh, we are going to do so for now i'll do this copy minimize this and since i entered this new table here so i'm going to go into this uh, formula bar and say control v uh, here also uh, let's call it as a date here because in this connection sheet we are calling it as a date so let's use the exact same name and later on we are going to link it yeah that's the purpose uh, why we are doing this so date i'm uh, removing this next part is add column everything else looks right let's execute it and see if it runs well or if we need to make some edits and that's very common yeah sometimes you might have some minor uh, issues so let's uh, like execute first if you face an issue make the necessary connections and it should run well so let's execute it oh awesome it did create fantastic great yeah so the next thing is uh, we need to change this because i know in the data for connections my starting uh, year is 2011 so instead of 2020 i'm going to say 2011 so that will be the first day that january 1 2011 to Gen uh, december 31 2024 yeah end of this year so i'm going to re-execute it again and awesome it is starting over here and that's what i was uh yeah i'm, I'm wanting so this is a great news let's uh, expand this and see awesome yeah it's starting here first january 2011 until all the way well uh, the yeah i mean it is going until today yeah oh sorry yeah maybe it's not uh, uh it's not displaying everything and that's still okay 
yeah as long as this date is correct yeah so this is something we created and also you see this table has been created and, and these are the contents so again it has a date column then it has a data sort then day name again it's it's uh yeah uh, mi mixed up over here you see this is data sort then day name and so on so this these are the content of this date table that we created so uh, awesome so i'm going to save this again another very important step we completed one more thing i will remind for this date simple table we created let's go to the table view let's select the date simple table that we executed always make sure that you save it as a mark it as a date table yeah so again this is what i'm doing i went selected this date table went to the table view and within table tools you see this uh, button that's uh, within the calendars mark as date table so make sure you mark it so i'm going to click over there i'm going to turn it on and when i do that it is asking me choose a date column so power bi auto identifies and gives us a suggestion so there is only one date i'm going to select that validate it successfully awesome now i am going to save it great another important task completed so i'm going to the report view again next i'm going to add one more table for all the uh, calculations yeah so all the calculations that is the calculated measures i'm going to create i want them to be saved in this table called as calculation so for that within my report view uh, you see on the top where it says data there is a sub button called as enter data i'm going to click on that and for the table name i'm going to name it as calculations c a l c u l a t i o n s I'm going to say load. It is doing the loading. Awesome. This calculation is created and a column one is added. Then I'm going to right click while my mouse is over here on the calculations and I'm going to say new measure. Great. And this measure I'm going to rename it. Let's call it as total connections. T O T A L C O N N E C T I O N S equals to c o u n t as soon as i start typing it will suggest make suggestions so as i said i will select the suggestion then within the suggestion it is telling uh, what what are the different entities i want to count so this time i want to uh, count the first names yeah so again this is the connection first name awesome then i want to execute it great so this part is also done. I'm going to, uh, so yeah, go on my right side, uh, the data pane. And where I see column one, I'm going to right click and say delete from model. I do not need column one anymore. So for now, this is the one I wanted within calculation total connections. Uh, so this is also completed. Let's go ahead and save our file. Next, as our standard practice, let's go ahead and add a text box and let's use it as a title here yeah, title of a dashboard towards the end when we are done with most of the visuals we will go ahead and use the linkedin blue color but uh, for now let's uh, focus on uh here yeah, the visuals as of now so i'm going to name it as linkedin analytics dashboard in k linked in yeah perfect select all let's use our standard 36 i'm going to make it bold based on our last experiences let's uh, center it out and again final call about where to keep it centered or left we will be designing it later i think this will look great when we use the linkedin blue color next let's do some fun part let's go ahead and add a LinkedIn background to this dashboard to look at much more professional. And this is a current trend. Many industries, based on which industry you work for, they prefer you to use their standard logo, standard background, standard colors, so that you are a good representative of uh, their uh, yeah, the, your company, your employer, and it shows professionalism for that. I'm just clicking somewhere in the canvas over here. Uh, not this, you're not clicking anywhere of the visual I created. Just click somewhere in the canvas. And then 
go to this part where it says visualization the second tab that says format your report page click on that then go to your canvas background here you can see this image part right so delete that and click on uh, this part select and here are uh, some of the backgrounds are provided in fact i mean that th those are the ones i tried tested and we are going to select only one which i think suits the best for this purpose so you see this is one uh, image this is second this is third this is fourth but i'm going to pick this one uh, because it has it has the clear uh, linkedin blue color and it has the name uh, yeah clearly printed again this is yeah like the logo logo and so on so let's pick this and uh, after I select, I'm going to say OK. Yeah, technically, the background has been applied, but the transparency is 100%. So here is the deal. If I say 0%, awesome. I see it. Uh, uh, like, yeah, I see this image very well fitted. And image fitting is normal. What if I say fit? OK, oh, yeah, I think fit is good because it will fit to the boundaries. If I say fill, I think fit is good based on the experiences. So this is looking great. And instead of transparency, 0% uh, as of now, let me try 50. For now, uh, let's play around. Um, I, no, maybe let's, let's go, let's try zero. Great. And uh, for this one, yeah, you see, uh, because this is a text box, this is a visual which has again zero transparency so you can't see be, uh, behind that let me play around with this here so i'm selecting this text box it is going to format text box properties height position padding no there must be something uh, called as transparency or something this is zero what if i play with 50 oops maybe 50 isn't working the best what if i say zero not working the best one zero zero Oops, it completely, yeah. Maybe in that case, the, yeah. In that case, uh, yeah, I think the background color. No, no, maybe let's play with the text color. I think, yeah, this is a great idea. So I'm selecting this entire thing. Font color menu, yeah. Let's make this as white. Beautiful. Yeah, I think this is looking great. So this will be our dashboard background and this is linked in analytics. Awesome. Yeah, for now I prefer this. So let's let's continue with this part. And for this visual also, let's let's standardize. So again, for the title, we said uh, no transparency at all, and this color is a white for this one also. So I'm selecting this visual, it is taking me to those properties. General call out value, category label. I think it's correct. Yeah, let's make it bolder category label yes for the background yeah so we have to look for the background over here background display units i think we don't need as of now text wrap spacing no font no uh, less likely it's here maybe it's it's somewhere over here so effect height position aspect ratio no title is of effects yeah Awesome. So here might we might have our key over here. So if I say one zero zero, completely gone. Yeah, maybe I don't want it to be completely gone. Let me say fifty. Uh, yeah, much better, right? Uh, so if I say seventy, let me go on the lower side twenty. Forty. For some reason, this dark blue and light blue, I'm uh, not super impressed. 30. Yeah, let's stick with 30. And towards the end, when we have our entire uh, dashboard ready, we will make the final color selection for all the visuals that we select. But I think for now, I'm leaning towards here. Also, the font color, right? Uh, since we are using white here, this is white. And again, when we have more visuals, I think this will be completely hidden. In that case, we'll be adding logo, LinkedIn logos over here. But this is good for now. So I'll keep it uh, color white and 30% transparency data format. Good enough. Uh, tool connection tool text alternate text title. Visual, yeah. Visual call out. 
yeah that black color let's change it to white sweet bold red same as the case yeah so this is for the call out display unit um, no. category label let's make this also white color awesome in that case i think the background should be much more darker so that it will stand out so great and again we are doing trial and error over here so we have yeah we'll, our goal is to make it uh, like as pleasing to eye as possible so we are on the in, in the right direction yeah so 20 makes it now maybe instead of 50 awesome did you guys go on zero zero aha yeah maybe if i do this and do this awesome maybe this will work but as of now i'll keep it because i want to i'm still building my uh, visuals so in that case i still want to see these boundaries so call out value going back category label going back general effects let's agree on 80 percent for now we'll come back sweet yeah so let's go ahead and see this so awesome we got this background now it is looking much more professional right so great uh, let's see this next i'm going to the model view and here i'm going to make this connection between dates so just drag this date over here and a window like this for the new relationship appears power bi automatically uh, makes its best guess and it is telling uh, yeah these are the date fields that can have a potential connection so yeah from table to over uh, here to here and cardinality it is saying one to many meaning in one of the fields one of the table over here uh, it will be one and there are many dates in the other part that's what it is telling so everything looks right to me so i'm just going to say save and here you can see it will make this connection yeah so one to many meaning there is one entry of date in this table that we created for the date and there are multiple replications of the same thing in here and that kind of makes sense because this is downloaded data so on the same day there might be lots of activities so this is what it means so with that said this part is completed so now let's go to our reports view that is the dashboard view again and here uh, i'm trying to get the count of the companies within which total connections work so there are two ways in the past we have seen lots of uh sim simple ways of doing it but yeah let, let me show you the dax way of doing it here yeah? and as a follow-up very soon a lecture dedicated on dax data analysis expression basics is coming so this is uh yeah i'm just trying to show you both ways of doing that for that very first is i'm going to replicate this so i'm going to select this visual control c card visual and control v i'm going to move it over here and yeah it's exact replicate so i'm going to tell this part the first way of doing it well uh, let's let's uh, use the dash and then come back and do it we'll be getting the same answers using both the same yeah so again uh, since we decided that I'm, i have added a new table just for calculation purpose and i'm going to do all the calculation that is calculated variable in this table and then we will be using it within our dashboard as required so i'm going to right click on my calculations and i'm going to say new measure awesome uh, something like this appears in the calculated field that is calculation equation field just like we have in uh, excel so this is the dax function we are activated so here i'm going to name it as total company c o m p a n i e s i'm going to say equals that's the name of my measure total companies and i'm going to start with distinct count yeah s t i n c t count yeah so i'm just going to select this one distinct counts then it is asking distinct counts of what so i'm going to scroll it down and you see this connections company that's what i'm going to select everything else looks right i don't see any error so it should execute i, I will either press enter or check this to execute and it will do its stuff and awesome this total companies uh, calculated variable has appeared here yeah? and you can see there is a calculated a calculator symbol over here meaning it's a calculated field so again my life is easy over here i will just drag this total companies in here awesome so uh, this is done so it is telling i have total 7680 
four connections within my LinkedIn, and uh, those connections, those seven thousand eight uh, six hundred, uh, yeah, almost seven thousand seven hundred connections work in five thousand forty distinct companies. Yeah, so this is one way of doing it. Other way of doing it, and we have done this done this a lot in our past. Is I'm just going to remove this, and you see this within connection that is a table uh, connection table uh, we have created initially. I am going to drag this company in my fields. And again, by default, it will take the first company, and I will make this bigger, expand this, and I will select this count distinct. Yeah, I'm getting the exact same number. Yeah, so that's this. Uh, yeah, the, these are the two ways of doing it. This is the easiest way, but uh, I'm also trying to teach you the DAX uh, utilization. Yeah, so again, in other case, it's the same. So since we have done so much hard work and created this calculated field, I'm going to remove this, and I'm just going to drag this total companies over. Here and awesome, I'm getting this. Yeah, uh, this also created. Let's go ahead and save our dashboard, whatever work we have done. Next, we are going to add two more visuals over here that display the invitations received and invitations sent. So, for that, I'm just going to start copying this. Control C, Control V, first time, Control V, second time. And so far, within whatever data that we have loaded, we do not have those. So I'm going to go to this get data again. And I'm going to select text slash CSV. It will take me to this folder where all the downloaded data files from my LinkedIn are there. So within that, I'm going to select this invitations.csv, select open. Again, Power BI will do its stuff, and then you will see this. Uh, yeah, uh, the, the loading uh, window here. I'm going to say transform data. Awesome. Yeah, the editor uh, window appeared over here. So within this, uh, you see I have from to send at. In this case, message is not going to make any sense for me. So I'm just going to remove that. See, remove, oh, sorry, remove column, select message, remove column. Also, the profile URLs are, is not adding any value. So I'm just going to remove this. Also, invitee profile is not adding any value. So I'm going to remove those. So technically, all I have is from, to, send, at, and direction. And within direction, there are two options I have, which is incoming and outgoing. Outgoing are the invitation that I sent and incoming are the invitation that I received. So that's yeah, the thing. And rest is to is you know the name of the person and send it, you know, what day, what time is something that is displayed. So these are the four main columns of our interest uh, in this sheet invitations uh, uh, data set. So I'm going to say close and apply. Awesome, it will do its stuff. And then you see this uh, thing got added. So next thing, now again, I'm going to add a couple of calculated variables over here. Yeah. So for that, I'm going to uh, uh, click outside and then right click on these calculations. And again, this is the DAX function again we'll be using. So when I right click on the calculations, I'm going to say new measure. Awesome. So yeah, it is created and it is asking me what is the equation. Maybe I'll just change the entire uh, name itself yeah instead of measure i will say invitation received ived equals to yeah and again this is a long dax function very similar to excel uh, equation that we use so i'm just going to type in here c o u and d so as soon as i start counting i start getting options which is a great thing uh, within this, I'm going to say count rows. Then it is asking me, yeah, well, what is the uh, other remaining content? I'm going to say filter. And within filter, I'm going to say all. And within all, it is giving me option. Yeah, it is drilling down throughout this sheet. Uh, yeah. And then it is asking me among uh, these each all these tabs which are available or the columns which are available uh, within this entire sheets or the tables, it is giving me few more options. So again, among all, I am looking at invitations here. Yeah? So I scroll down and find the one that says invitation. Great. 
then I'm going to uh, close this bracket and then I'm going to start with a comma and again I'm going to start with invitations. Invitations and this time I'm looking the direction. Yeah, if you remember when we were I was showing you the data within directions, uh, there are two options incoming and outgoing. Yeah, so this is we are drilling down towards the direction field so that we can clearly tell look for incoming in this case because this is invitation received. So I'm going to select invitation direction and then I'm going to leave a space over here and then I'm going to say equal to. And then in inverted comma here, yeah, double F first of E, I'm going to start typing in C O M I N G, inverted comma close. Just make sure the spelling is correct here. Yeah? So it's exactly the spelling that is there in the data that we uploaded or added. Then make sure you close this inverted comma, which is done rightly here. Then close it one time, close it second time. Uh, looks like so far, Power BI is not telling me that there is any error, which is a good news. Let's execute and see if it goes well. Yeah, if there is minor error, we can always come back and uh, update it. So I'm going to execute. Uh, check over here, a commit. It's doing its stuff. Awesome. Looks like it went well. And again, we can hardly see this over here. So I'm going to drag this so that I can see the entire text over here. So awesome. So now this is done. So with that said, I'm going to select this copy pasted tab that say total company. I'm going to remove this part. Then again, it's an open, uh, like sorry, empty card over here. Then I'm going to, going to drag this invitation received within this. So awesome. So as per this, it is telling me the invitation received by me from different users for a given time period was 241. Yeah, so this is great. Next, similarly, we are going to say invitation send. Yeah, so this is a received. I'm going to say a send out. So for that, very similar. Now, uh, similar to what we did over here in this DAX, we were looking for incoming. We are going to use exact same formula. And this time we are going to say outgoing. Yeah, so that will be invitation send. So for that, I'm just going to uh, create a new measure. And technically, this is since we know most of the things are going to be exact, only the last word is going to be different. All I'm going to do is, yeah, let's go into my table view. We'll take into the table view. Oh, yeah, I know exactly what's happening. So within this, in order for, I'm looking for the formula for, yeah, so within table view, uh, as soon as I select this invitation received, I see this. DAX function. So I'm going to select it all, say control C, then go back to my report view. And then this time I'm going to right click over here and say new measure. And here I'm going to name that measure. Uh, well, technically I'm going to copy paste it is, yeah, and then I'm going to change this word into invitations. S, sorry, S E N T. This part is completed, then everything else remains the same except that this out incoming changes to outgoing. O U T G O I N G. Make sure the word uh, the spelling is exactly correct, or else it will give error. I'm sure you will do it correctly. No worries. Yeah. So with that said, uh, I think we are ready to execute this. I'm going to execute. Awesome. This also went well. I'm not seeing any error. And let me show you a demo of an area. So suppose if I do something like this, yeah, on, on purpose a typo, and if I'm executing this, well, I know exactly what happened. So if, uh, yeah, there's a typo, so it won't be able to find anything. So now I'm, I'm selecting this fourth one, removing this, I'm, I'm going to drag this invitation sent. Yeah, it's telling me blank because the, this word is not matching. So how do I fix it is I'm uh, adding that an ongoing exactly same word. And now I'm going to say execute it executed. I'm going to remove this. And then I'm going to drag this within here. It's still seeing. So now something isn't correct. Oh, oh, outgoing. Sorry. Yeah, again, another case of typo. So incoming and outgoing. O U T 
going yes yeah, so this time this word is exactly correct i'm going to execute and awesome as soon as it was able to find out going it uh, it is giving me the right number second thing that might happen is you know while you are typing all this and so on if there is an issue with suppose this and yeah you see uh, on purpose i know there is uh, something wrong so i'm going to execute it so when i do that you see what happens this is gone and now uh, next to this newly created calculation there is a bar over here it is which sees that it's an error yeah so even uh, this can happen i think that's a good sign it clearly tells you what is wrong and again when that error occurs when you are selecting that you can see there is a yeah message over here red alert saying the following syntax occurred during parsing invalid token and so on so yeah definitely it's an uh, error so let me fix that and direction and close it out awesome now i'm going to execute it again so it looks like there is still an error oh there is an extra one hopefully that's the only issue if not we can go back okay yeah this time it's fixed yeah so awesome this is how we did it and again this n is capital well in my caps lock is on that's why i'm going to fix it so that yeah Direction correct. I'm going to execute again a final time. Awesome. Yeah, this is done. And again, I'm glad that you know these errors and so on. I'm showing these demos because you should know uh, what could go wrong and how to uh, which location to go and fix it. Yeah. So with that said, we uh, completed this. Next, among the several files that have been downloaded, uh, let's go ahead and check a few more. Awesome. So there is this uh, file that says endorsement received. So I'm planning on adding a KPI that will count the number of endorsements that I have been uh, receiving uh, over the years, uh, even the events. So uh, I want to create a KPI that keeps account of the number of events I have attended through a LinkedIn over the years. Let's see if there is anything else that stands out. I think uh, these two are good for now. So let's go ahead and create these two uh, for endorsement received and events attended through LinkedIn. Awesome. So I'm going to get data, text CSV, endorsement received. Awesome. I'm going to say transform data. Great. Yeah, looks like uh, the top row over here, row number one should be my uh, header. So I'm going to select row one. I'm going to say use first row as header. Excellent. So I want endorsement date, skill name. Who is the person who endorsed my skill? I don't think this is important. So I'm going to select and say remove column. Awesome. So this uh, table has one, two, three, four, five, five sheets. Great. I'm going to say close and apply. Awesome Power BI will do its stuff and awesome endorsement received uh, has been added. Uh, next thing is, as we discussed, is uh, let's go ahead and add the events. So, for that, I'm going to go to uh, get data text CSV events.csv. Again, Power BI will do its stuff. I will say transform data, Power Query uh, editor window will appear and say, I will say transform data. Here quickly checking, yeah, looks like the first row should be my header. So I'm going to just select. Awesome. This is rightly done. Event name that I attended, even time, status, and I don't think URL is important. So I'm just going to select this and say remove columns. Excellent. So this table has three uh, columns in it. I'm going to say close and apply. Awesome. Yeah. So these two got added. Next, uh, looks like these are too big. So I'm going to squeeze this a little bit. Squeeze this as well so that I can fit the newly added two more. Then that uh, space over there yeah, for me, let me eyeball it later on. We can systematically align and adjust them horizontally as well as vertically so that the length and height are the same. For now, I just eyeball it. Awesome. I think I can fit into so I'm going to say control C, control V first time, second one, control V second time. Awesome. 
this moves over here. Great. So this should be my, I'm looking at the endorsement received. Yeah. So I'm just going to make bigger. I'm going to pick uh, any one of it. Well, first I'm going to remove this from the field. Then I'm going to pick any one of it. Let me extend this so I can read them. Let's see endorsement status. And I'm going to drag it into the fields. Awesome. It's going to show me the first and name status. I'm going to say count. Awesome. So it looks like I have received 340 endorsements for all the skills I have listed on LinkedIn. So I'm, I'm going to change uh, endorsements received. R E C E I V E D. I'm going to, yeah, let me specify. Yeah, so skill. S K I L L endorsement endorsements receive. Oops. Skills endorsements received. Awesome. This looks great. I think I need to. Or I think yeah. Let me just say endorsement receive. It's becoming too longer. I don't think it makes sense. So I think this is good size uh, comparable to others. The next one is, uh, yeah, events attended, yeah. So again, I'm going to select this, remove uh, everything from the field. And for the event as well, I'm going to pick any one of this, say event name, drag it into my fields and change it to count, awesome. And currently it says count of event name. I'm just going to say events attended. Number. E B N E S A T T E N D E D. Awesome. Yeah, this is good. Number of events attended. Total connection. Uh, yeah, I think this is good. Then, yeah, let me just select all. Well, I think the width isn't correct. So let me try and fix that. Yeah, let me do the standard way. So make I'm selecting all of these one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's go to format selection, bring forward, no align, left, distribute horizontally. Yeah, this is good, but again, I'm not happy with the width. So let me select the first one, or uh, maybe first look one looks very long. I think I want this looks good. Then let's go over here, call out value, call out level, no. Size, property, effects, data, format, header, icon, tool, text, no. No property, okay, height, width, yeah. So I think uh, height, I'm happy, 120. Looks like everything else is also 120. 120, 120, quick check, quick check, quick check, quick check. Yeah, the widths are uh, varying. So it's, let's finalize 195 maybe. 195, 195, 195, enter. 95, enter. Awesome. Yeah, so now I want two, three, four, five, six, and align them horizontally. Awesome. So, yeah. Well, it didn't work. Yeah, this time I did maybe one or two weren't selected. Awesome. So with this uh, we have added a total of six KPIs. Next, we are going to create an area chart for the total connections by month name. So I'm just going over here within visualizations and clicking on area chart. Just drag it and try to align it. Yeah, I think this is a good uh, width as well as height. So I'll keep it somewhere between half of this fourth KPI that we have. And I'll try to utilize half of this width uh, based on the remaining like uh, part of the screen. So I think this is good. Next, I am going to drag the total connections in my y-axis. Yeah. So again, if you can't see, maybe drag it somewhere over here. And you see this total connections. I'm going to drag it in my y-axis over here and the month name yeah in my x axis and then i'm going to sort it based on 
month name but here you can see uh, there, there is a trick over here and again looks like i went into the descending order so again i'm go, going to go over here again and sort access currently it's descending order month name so i'm going to select ascending order but here again you can see there is a trick over here when i said ascending order for the month it is going by alphabetical order and which is not what i want i want it to be a systematic january to december so for that here is a big learning uh, thing for you learning experience for you how to change that yeah so again this is a trick i want you all to know and remember forever because if you try to do it uh, within uh, using this way no there is no way to do it and even if you try to uh, play around with settings over here and many more you cannot do it so uh, one of our recent feature uh, power bi has added is yeah while you are here within your dashboard please go to your model view yeah and you might uh, see something as soon as you go to the model view you might see something like this over here which are yeah those correct uh, several tables that we have and within these tables uh yeah the only one that has connection uh the only two that has connection uh is this connections and date and yeah so i want you to select within your connection tables i want you to select date which i did and again you can see uh, something like property appeared over here and within the data it is locating the date here so this is an important step so within my data tab again i will do this very slowly so you can follow maybe you want to pause and rewatch but yeah within my data tab i am going to make this uh, table part smaller and then bigger again here here and for my this uh, date column 12 thingy which shows the date and it's the date table and all its detail yeah but again i st i started this through connections yeah i'm seeing the details of this table through my connections so i'm going to select month name over here and something like this happens and do not worry a lot so month name and then i will go into my properties yeah so i selected this month name within my date column 12 month name and then i'm going to uh yeah go into the properties scroll all the way down where i can see advanced yeah for you this advanced might be see like uh, consolidated so please expand this advanced and currently it is telling sort by column so when i selected month name it is sorting by default it is month name so it will do the sorting by name that's why we are seeing that a to z pattern alphabetical order and not the actual uh, yearly pattern that we have so here is the deal here so i'm going to expand this and within the sort option i'm going to select month number yeah so although within my data i have i'm yeah i have selected month name from now here yeah? so for now what will happen is for these properties when i went to the advanced sort by column i selected month name and again power bi did something over here which uh, like few seconds ago so yeah it is it will do it based on it will do the sorting based on month number yeah so this is an important step completed i'm going to close this up and uh, from my model view again i am going to my report view yeah so again as soon as i did it you see what happened previously it was alphabetical a to z i think it started with april and so on now it's systematic yeah so again it sorted the month name which we are seeing x axis over here based on the month number yeah so again we have created this month number which is a default part of the date or to date uh, the code that we added so i'm doing the sorting for month name using month number yeah and again uh, how we did it is we went over here we selected this date and uh yeah something like this popped up we expanded this in the date and selected month name then we went into the properties and uh yeah this advanced uh, initially was consolidated i'm going to make it bigger and i'm going to say sort by column month number then we uh, yeah like the change actually took effect we closed this window went back and then we are seeing over here so this is awesome this is a yeah another good progress this is exactly what we were looking for so yeah this important step completed now let's go ahead and uh, fix the formatting over here so again the names are stated month names are stated so we do not need this 
the numbers are also stated so we do not need this let's center it let's see in the title to the right name we want and let's play around with the yeah, this line that we are seeing as well as area under and let's try to match it up based on the linkedin blue color and uh, we will try to make this transparent so that we can see the background that says linkedin as well so yeah let's go ahead and do fix the formatting yeah so for that again i'm going to select over here and uh, let's go to format so within x i will make this x axis bigger i do not need title so i'm going to remove the title make it smaller y axis also title remove the title values here yeah, i want them so that is looking great our uh, next part is marker let's see markers are off shade area currently it is apply the all these settings to all color match so yeah this area color we are seeing it is matching with the line color it just uh, this is 60 percent transparent that's why this is darker and this is low so i think this is the first place where it should we should apply the linkedin blue color thing so again i pulled this i did a google search uh, to search for linkedin blue color code so as per google it is telling me this is the code oa66c2 i'm just going to copy this Going to move to my other window. Awesome. So now I am going to say do not match the line color. I want to uh, insert this. This option is activated and currently it's saying there is no color, which is okay. I'm going to make it bigger. Then I'm going to go to more colors. And again, I'm going to start with the hash or a number sign and control v that's the exact same and you see it took the linkedin blue color effect so this is looking great so and again the transparency is set to 60 percent i think i'm happy with 60 percent so i'll keep it as is so again this area uh, color has been matched to the linkedin blue color so again that's one thing completed next thing is let's do the same thing for this line yeah currently you are seeing that you know a certain type of blue color which is also okay but let's be more professional and use linked in blue color so again currently it's telling apply the setting to all that's correct line is solid uh, let me try and uh, experiment with say dashed maybe good dotted maybe good i think i like the dashed one so i'll keep it dashed over here width i'm happy with 3x let me see uh, what happens if i raise it to 5x yeah i think much eye catchy bold so i'll keep it 5 maybe interpolation linear color wise yeah currently it's taking this uh, typical blue color it got from this series i guess let's change it to our standard linked in blue color yeah so again i have already copied i'm going to start with hash and control v awesome yeah great it took that color and again transparency is set to zero so that's why you are seeing actual bold color next thing is uh, let me see again i mean uh, i know i can hover my mouse and it will give me the total connections are 2306 and again i have 12 months so again for each of that month i can hover my mouse and get those details something more is let me try with uh, the data labels yeah what happens if i add the data labels yeah i think i like this uh yeah for each month it, i'm getting the numbers so i think yeah i like this so i'll keep it so for january 700 500 february march was 400 and so on and it looks like the highest i have is in october uh yeah maybe october is a busy uh I was uh, yeah like too too busy with making the connections. Looks like uh, consistently the last quarter yeah October November are the highest even yeah December looks the highest maybe not yeah I think only 424 versus January is high but again yeah this is something. So here also I think I like these numbers so I'll keep it. Next thing is uh, lines fixed shade area within line yeah let's see what may, maybe let's try and play with a marker yeah. Let me see currently we do not have marker if i add markers yeah i think it adds the circle right maybe i like it yeah size is 5x what if i make it 6 7 8 well maybe it is too big yeah let's match it up with 5 yeah so equivalent with uh, whatever the line size we had 5 so this is also looking good 
next thing is let's fix the title yeah so i'm going to make these smaller uh, smaller hey one more thing is you see uh, the months are going angular so maybe let me go to the visual why this is selected let me change this month name to say short month name yeah oh sorry you know i exactly close it out so i'm going to take the month name away and let me drag the month short name awesome i think this is looking good but again uh, we haven't changed the sorting option for month short name yeah so that uh sort by the short month name by month number was only done for month name so we have to do it for the short name also yeah so let's treat it as a practice session for us so i'm going to go over to the model view again going to select the date within my connections table and then this changes accordingly i am going to minimize this minimize this and within this date table i am going to say month short name and then uh, if this isn't the advanced uh, properties is not expanded for you please go ahead and expand that currently it is selling sort by column month short name expand it and say by month number again here power bi did something over here this should take effect and i'm going to close it out and then go to my report view again and now i am going to say sort by month short name awesome uh, it's a reverse so yeah again that one thing is done but again it's reverse it goes from december november until january so i'll say sort by ascending order awesome yeah so this is looking even more better yeah because yeah i have this short name yeah next uh, let's go ahead and fix the title over here so i will go to my general tab title total connections by month short name i know it's month short name i'll take away the and in fact what happens if i say total connections by month because here i mean title wise i do not care if i see the entire thing or not so yeah i think i'm happy with what i'm seeing then i will make it bolder as well let me try and center it out yeah looking great well these uh, text are white this is black so let's try to match the text color also based on the linkedin blue i have already copied so let's see oh yeah i think this is looking good i like this color linkedin blue and let's be uh, yeah be standard later on maybe we can add the linkedin blue to these colors as well and give a transparency so that we can it will still have the shade mix of linkedin blue as well as whitish but i think i am happy with this color over here maybe i'll change the these colors also for the titles sorry for the access titles yeah yeah so for that let's go to visuals again x axis yeah these are the colors so i'll go over here already copied linkedin color code i'm going to say control v yeah this has changed excellent i i like this let me try and make it bolder yeah i think bold is even more it, it becomes eye catchy i like it then let's do the same thing for y axis also values color is yeah this dark grayish go over here let's change i'm going to just control v yeah so this is our linkedin blue color hash 0a66c2 we got it from the internet applied yeah this is looking great i'm going to make it bolder as well looking good then for the data labels also so i'm going to make this smaller data labels set all yeah it should be all option effect position is good uh why i'm not seeing options yeah this could get confusing but no worries we'll we'll fix it it's a matter of patience and searching so no worries the values okay got it so it's not uh yeah here but it's between data labels values total connections so i'm going to make this bigger control v the linked in blue color awesome looking very good 
I want to make it bolder as well. So very well standing out. And again, as soon as I hover, I see the actual numbers and so on. So looking very, very good. And again, uh, I know this is 2K. These are, yeah, what if I make a change the unit? Yeah, and again, this is an exercise for you also. How to play around and look, uh, yeah. Decimal places, okay. Display units, firstly, uh, let me, um, and custom, if I go with custom. Oh yeah, I think I like the full number. Yeah, 670. Yeah, fine. Yeah, I think, yeah, I, I like this. I'll keep this over here and I think I will do the same thing for my Y axis also. Instead of 1K, 2K, I just do 1000. 2000 and here I'm seeing the actual numbers. Maybe I don't need this because I'm seeing well month wise. I know it's a total connections by month and I have these numbers. So I'll take this. Uh, yeah, Y axis also off. Going back Y axis, I'll say values. Just yeah, take it away. Awesome. I think this is much more simplified and easy to understand. So just looking at here, I'm seeing total connections by month. So here are the months and these are the connections for each month. Awesome. This is uh, looking really good. So with that, I will save this part also. Now, finally, within the format, let's, uh, yeah, background. Yeah, so let's play with the general effects. Background color is this. The transparency is zero. What if I make it? Oh, wow. This is good. No, but uh, our main graph area graph is getting hidden. So what if I do this? 2015. Let me try. Let me fix play with uh, multiples of five to five. Yeah, I think this is visible and I can see that shade of LinkedIn, which is good. Let me play with 10. I like this also. In that case, uh, maybe, yeah, I think, yeah, let, let's keep it 10%. Yeah, background, let's keep it white and keep it 10. So this kind of stands out and we can still see that light uh, LinkedIn in the back which is look, looking much more professional. And later on, we'll make a call about how we want to uh, keep those or we want to change it and so on. But I think for now, we'll keep this. With that, I am saving this. Next, we are going to plot total connections by company. So I know definitely these are my connections and these are companies. So, you know, on an average, the ratio is definitely more than one and a half times. But let's systematically plot a chart. For that, I'm going to pick this stack bar chart uh, please make sure before clicking that you have clicked somewhere in the canvas space over here then i am clicking on the stacked bar chart awesome that's this was placed and again i'm going to move it and fit it in this space over here and here on the uh, x-axis i'm going to add the connections and on the y-axis, I'm going to add the company. Yeah, you, so you see, uh, I got this total connections from my calculations added to my x-axis and y-axis. Uh, I'm going to add the company. Awesome. It created a chart to the best it can. And yeah, this really looks awesome. Formatting. Let me show you another trick. Uh, again, I, I mean, one thing is I can always go ahead and re-edit, reformat everything uh, looking similar to this and all these. Other part is I just straight away copy all the formatting from this chart over here into here. For that, all I have to do is uh, click on this chart over here. Then within my home page, there is this clipboard. Above it, there is this active format painter. I'm going to click on that. So uh, yeah, so you see the format filter has been activated from this chart. I'm going to click on this second chart where I want to apply the formatting from the first chart into my second chart. Awesome. As soon as I do it, you see the format of this is matching as these. Yeah. Although the bar colors, because yeah, there are no bars over here. Maybe a uh, power bed didn't find it. We will change it. But other everything looks right. So if I quickly scroll. Awesome. I'm seeing the numbers. Uh, this is a company. Uh, my previous employer, Striker, it had uh, yeah, from Striker that 04 employees. Utah Valley uh, 116, Baker Huge. That was the competitor of the previous company I worked for, Slumberjay. Uh, so yeah, I have yeah, I have lots of friends from Baker Huge as well. Then yeah, I do some a uh, lot of work with 
US Department of Energy and NASA. So looks like I have 85 from them. And again, this slumber is same as SLB. So again, uh, yeah, there is confusion. Self employed 63, Halliburton is a, another competitor of uh, slumber is your SLB. So I have 39 friends, North of Grumman, retired, and so on. And the very first is unnamed. And I exactly know the reason why. All these are from uh, my yeah my previous uh, second previous company Slumberjay, but I will tell you why this is uh, Power BI is com uh, getting confused. So if I go into my table view over here, I have already applied filters. So let me clear all the filters. So within this company piece, if I make this bigger and type Mega Diamond M E G A D I A Mega Diamond and click OK, you see uh, yeah. So Mega Diamond was the name of the factory facility in Provo where I was actually physically located and it's a Slumberjee company. So yeah, again, maybe there are some Mega Diamond Slumberjee company, there are Mega Diamonds and there are a few MGDs also which are not displayed over here. So that's the reason why Power BI is getting confused and me and that's the reason uh, there is no name more here. So I mean, I am aware of that issue, but for now, I'm not going to worry a lot for this, uh, you know, uh, dashboard purpose. As long as you know what's happening and uh, yeah, what are they going to the content, I'm, I'm okay with uh, that. So yeah, this is what I got. So this is a systematically plotting of uh, yeah the total number of connections by company. So most I have found Mega Diamond or Slumber J company. And again, technically I should be adding this plus this. So 84 plus 103 plus 68. So that's the total number of uh, connections I have from my previous, previous company. In my immediate previous uh, company I have 200 and as I scroll down yeah there are few from the other companies uh, North Improvement, uh, NASA Gobert, uh, Space Center, Francis State, I have 25 Boeing, SpaceX, Amazon, Google, US Department of Energy, uh, Freelance, Amazon Web Services, BYU, NASA again so again it's, it's confusing the name so this is NASA Gobert versus this is NASA National Center and so on. So yeah, these are uh, all the companies uh, from yeah and the respective connections I have. Here also you can see Smith Smith at the Sunbury company. So again, even that technically should be added to oh my oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah uh, the yeah, very first company I should this. So again, technically this is what we plotted. So let me go ahead and change this color of the bars to our preferred, which is LinkedIn blue color. So for that, I'm going to select this, going to uh, format here visual and you see bars over here. So let me pull our slumber J, sorry, uh, LinkedIn code over here. So this is my LinkedIn blue color. I'm going to copy it again. Now this is my other window. Awesome. Let's go. So yeah, this looks great. So yeah, very matching to this. Awesome. So with that, even uh, this chart is completed. Next, we are going to plot the total connections by the positions they hold. For that, we are going to uh, create a very unique type of visualization called as word cloud. So again, word cloud doesn't come as a standard visual. And this is very similar to what we have done uh, where uh, I utilized the Gantt chart. And I was the one who provided you the file that is the PBI VIS. So that VIS file was provided by me uh, within the assignment. This time I'm going to show you how to get that world, uh, world cloud a whiz from your existing apps yeah so for that yeah, make sure you click somewhere here on the canvas of the dashboard then within the visuals go over here where you see these three buttons also called as ellipsis so please click on that ellipsis where it says get more visuals so i'm going to click on it the very first option says get more visuals yeah so please click on that once done, a window like this will appear where it says Power BI visuals, all visuals, and yeah, these are the extra ads. So within my search option, I'm going to type in W O R D C L O U D. Yeah. And again, there are two options available. Well, you, technically you can use this as well, but for this specific assignment, we are going to use this Cloud by Microsoft Corporation itself. And yeah, so I'm going to click on it. 
And when I click, you see Power BI is doing something. Then it is giving some more description of what it is overview. Create a fun visual for frequent text on your data and so on. And it's giving some, uh, yeah, like snapshot of how it will look like. So more numbers will give bigger size and less numbers for less frequency will give smaller size, technically something like that. So this is one and here you go. So it looks like we can give, uh, create multiple charts also, categorial also. So yeah, these are a couple options available and this is the descriptions I will let you read. Uh, so on that note, I am going to, again, it's free. So I'm going to click uh, add. When I do add, awesome, it did. Yeah, it says, yeah, it, uh, the Power BI did its own thing. And now I got a message saying uh, import successful. This was success imported. I'm going to click OK. And when I check over here, you see this has been created. Yeah. So Word Cloud 2.3.40 has been added to your visualizations. Next, let's go ahead and click on this Word Cloud. Awesome, it called not I don't know the edge is the size to somewhere. I think yeah, I think this is a good size. Even a little bit up. Yeah, I think this is good for now. Then here I'm going to add position into my category and I'm going to add the total connections into my value field. Awesome, this looks great. And let me copy the format. So I'm going to select this chart over here and go to Home Clipboard Format. And press select and apply the format. Oops, something went wrong. No worries, I'm doing it again. Okay. Here. So format has no, been copied. Oh, yeah, perfect. This is looking great. And uh, from this, just visually glance through what I can see is that, oh, sorry. Yeah, I think yeah, this is good. What I'm seeing is uh, uh, maybe I have my connections, like highest are managers, the number is 704. The next highest are directors, directors, 530. And it looks like the next highest are maybe CEO, 244. The next highest are chief oh sorry this is 315 and uh, ceos are 244 presidents are 255 executives are 256 also one more thing just visually looking i think there is this space over here the space which i can still utilize so i can still try to expand this so for that while this is selected i will go into format your visual and within visual general you see, it says minimum font size, 20% maximum is 100%. I am going to try maybe, let's try 10%. Oops, no, it's, no, it doesn't look right. So maybe I'll go back to 20% where it was. Let's try 25%. Awesome, yeah. So it looks like this gap has closed. Let me try 30%. Oh, yeah, yeah, awesome. 30% is much better. So again, uh, here we created this a word cloud type of chart uh, which shows positions by the total number of collection and again this goes by the size so higher the connection larger this text will be yeah so looks like the highest i have are managers then uh yeah chief uh yeah, chiefs 315 and this is off i don't know it uh, yeah well maybe it wrongly took so 398 and CEOs are 244, C, uh, executives are 256, engineers are 400, and founders are 263, and it looks like, yeah, this receiving are 13. So yeah, uh, this is what we created. Next, let's go ahead and create a chart that shows the skill name that I have and the number of endorsements I have received for the same, yeah? So for that, I'm going to select this, Stack column chart. Awesome, it got added. I'm going to move it somewhere over here. Let's align this. Uh, yeah, I think this is good. Drag it all the way. Yeah, I think this is good. We'll align around this here. Perfect. And then I'm going to add my skill name on my X axis. Yeah, so drag the skill name X axis and the endorsement. Well, yeah, it doesn't matter. I'm going to say endorsement date and then, then I'm going to use the count. Yeah, so date doesn't technically doesn't matter. 
So yeah, by default, it took the count. So that is great. I just changed the name over here to say endorsement. Yeah, endorsement. And this is my skill name. Yeah, so the title is correct. Endorsement by skill name. And I will let me copy the uh, format. So I'm going to select this chart over here. You can click through. I'm going to select format painter. Paste the format. Awesome. This is looking very well. Yeah, in fact, it did exactly what I was looking for. Now let's change the bar color to our LinkedIn blue. So yeah. while this is selected, I'm going to my visual bar. Yeah, columns is what I'm looking for. So let me pull our again. This is I'm doing this on purpose so that yeah, you know exactly where this is coming from. LinkedIn blue color code. This is the code I'm copying. I got from Google and copying, and then I will go to my color theme over here. More colors, hash and control V. Perfect. This is uh, yeah the perfect color I was looking for. And these are the skills. Yeah, so again, it is going by Pareto highest host and declining. So it looks like uh, 48 of my connections have endorsed me for lean manufacturing, 39 for engineering. 34 for industrial engineering, 21 for manufacturing, 21 for root cause analysis, 19 for yeah. process engineering, 18 for Six Sigma, 15 for Minitab, and so on and on. Uh, maybe let's try and make this uh, bigger because yeah, the number is displayed. And again, I think we have this room available. So let's go and uh, play with the yeah the settings over here. So I think this belongs to uh, my number one guess is. Data labels is this. I think it belongs to X axis. Title no layout. Minimum category width. Yeah, I think this is the one. So currently it is selling 20. What if I do? Oh no. Yeah, it totally takes this whole. Well, again, it's a good one, but I think it's overkill. It started with 20. Let's go back to 20. Let me play with 25. Let's see what happens. No major change. Let me try 30. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I think, well, this is the width that increases. So maybe I'll go with 20. Okay, now I know what's happening. So the bar width is changing over here. Technically, I want uh, this extra space over here. So maybe not this one. Title. Maximum height of the bar. Again, values is here. Maximum height is 25. Oh yeah, this is the one, yeah. So within x-axis, expand your value field. Color is here, maximum width is what we are looking at. And yeah, I think I can still live, increase, say let's try 35. Yeah, looking good. Let me try 40, or zero. Awesome, this is looking great. And beyond this, I won't go. So I think this is good for now. Let's see max, if I go max out, what do I see? I think this is, uh, not a perfect way to dip it. Uh, this looks too long and the bars look too small. So maybe I'll backtrack. Let's go 40. I think 40 looks good here so that I can at least read uh, part of the skill and then the number. Yeah, highest are over and least are over here. So with that said, yeah, I'm happy with what it is looking. Let me see if I can add a few more things. Constant line. What if I do this? Oops, no. It, there's a line being added, nothing. No worries, yeah. So in that case, yeah, let's uh, yeah, let's save this. Next, we are going to create a, a donut chart for the number of messages received and sent out. Yeah. So for that, we don't have uh, the messages table yet. So within the data that I have downloaded previously, we are going to use this one. Yeah, so this is the data downloaded and within that there is this messages that CSV looks like it's a huge file. So we are going to load it in our Power BI and then do the further processing to create that donut chart. So for that, yeah, so within my Power BI dashboard, I'm going to go to the get data, add text slash CSV file scroll down and select the messages. Yeah, where can I see yeah, here is the messages.csv open file 
yeah then this uh, query editor window pops in i am going to say transform data awesome and here uh, yeah looks like i'll be using the first row as header so click on that first row as header Yeah, that has been created. Next, looks like this is of not so used. So I'm going to right click remove or just going to select this and say remove column. Then I'm going to scroll a little bit to my right. Looks like this subject is also of not that great use. So I'm going to delete or remove the column. Then within the date, you can see the format I have is year, month, date, time yeah so again something has to be done over here so for that i'm going to select this date column and here i'm going to say split column split column by delimiter and again uh, let's study the format over here so for that i'm going to click outside the way this date is shown over here or being downloaded is uh, four digit year dash two digit month or maybe one digit month 080904 and then dash then two digit number yeah and if i go in the same let's see yeah it's 06 or so two digit number followed by a space uh, looks like the space is across the board then there is a time and yeah 24 hours format so 1741 541 pm this uh, message was sent and uh, yeah this is the second i guess and utc so looks like we need to separate yeah so uh, yeah i think the space is the right way because there is a constant space over here so i'm going to select this entire date column I'm going to select split column by delimiter window like this appears over here and within the select uh, or enter delimiter i am going to select space and space split at left most delimiter yeah so uh, power bi or this power query editor will start looking for the space for, uh, starting from left and the first space it uh, finds it's going to uh, separate it out yeah it's going to split it out so uh, everything all set i'm going to click ok and see what happened there is date dot one and date dot two two columns have been created split and on the yeah, left hand side date dot one it's a systematic date format right hand side it's a systematic time uh, format which says hours minutes seconds format and technically we do not need this so i'm going to select on this and say remove column awesome next part is yeah i think this is done so i'm going to say close and apply something more you can do but again we are not going to uh, use it uh, but yeah you see this got added messages table got added and within that yeah our standard uh, content is there something more you can do again we are not like uh, going to use it but again you can go to your model view over here and uh, i'm scrolling to the right you can see number of uh, tables have been added over here although we have made connection only for this one and then the final one is message so i can always drag message over here uh, maybe date and this date over here oh sorry uh, we, one more thing we can do is you can see this is date and then even this is date and this is date dot one so maybe let's go back to our table view within messages itself I'm going to select messages it will take me to that message table exact table let me change this date underscore one to date in the same format we have used for the uh, calculations as well as date so this looks like the same i'm going to click enter awesome it made the necessary changes now i'm going to my model view and this should change you see this has been changed so here i can say uh, either manage relation or create a new relation or just drag this date and just link it over here it will identify the best known relation it can it is asking me a new relation from table messages to table date it is telling many to one meaning in my uh, this messages table there are multiple dates on the you know same day uh, multiple uh, messages were sent so that's what it is telling many to one meaning date only has one so it looks right to me i am going to say save 
and then yeah it will go ahead and make that connection awesome this is done yeah so again uh, just trying to show you how you do that yeah how you make uh, connections again i will see my work that i have done yeah it did its own thing and it made the connection now i'm going to go to my report view the dashboard again and i'm going to click on this empty space uh, canvas space over here and here i am going to add my donut chart yeah as soon as you do that you see a donut like or a chart like this tries to fit in the best it can uh, let's tag a little bit over here awesome this looks great so yeah i think we are all set to add here so i'm going to make this messages table bigger and if i study well yeah you see uh, there is this thing that says recipient profile sender profile well i can always count let's see if there is something else yeah content conversation id date folder from and to i think i'll be using this from and to yeah so from uh, that's me so that will be the messages sent and to sorry uh, is the other way from is received from and sent to so let me uh, experiment around over here so i'm dragging from to my values over here 5020 count of from if i make this bigger yeah let me say it's count distant awesome so it looks like a uh, message is coming from that is yeah like received it's uh yeah 1250 and if i do the same thing for two yeah so it looks like the messages i sent out were uh, two right here. Yeah. Yeah, so the dark blue. So it looks like uh, five thousand messages sent out, and um, see I received where one thousand two. Yeah, uh, yeah, twelve fifty and so. So this is looking uh, correct. Yeah. So I'm going to change the values over here, the titles over here. So instead of count of from, I'm going to say messages sent, and messages received. received i'm going to click enter awesome this is looking great i like the color maybe i can change it yeah let's change this to our standard what we have been doing that is uh yeah our linkedin color so again the same i'll drag the same uh, window over here so this is my linkedin blue color i've been using so going back into your yeah, while this is selected i'm going to go to my format your visual slices yeah perfect yeah let's change the messages received first i'm going to go over here hash and control v awesome this looks good and for the other one also i'm going to do uh, the same way or maybe a lighter version I think yeah this is good what if i do a much lighter yeah i think this looks good or does this look good i think yeah the other one yeah i think i will keep this for now other thing is let's copy format and paste it over here yeah i think this is standing out very well oh, but again i think it took went back yeah, it went back so let me change this as well Control V, and I think this is reversed. Yeah, so no worries. I'm going over here. So this is messages received, and this is messages sent. S E N T out. Perfect. And I think this is good messages received versus messages sent. Yeah, I think the title is correct. I like the way it is showing that. Yeah, it's showing the number as well as percentage also. So almost 20% are these and 80% are these. Yeah, I think this is good. This is good. I think this can move a little bit to the left. So let's play around with the formatting while this is selected. Legend, I think I'm happy with the legend. Uh, center right or no. Yeah, let's do legend top left or top center awesome yeah this is even better 
And I think my yeah, text color, we need to fix it. A legion text color. Let's use our LinkedIn blue. Awesome. And what if I make it bolder? Maybe I think lighter was good. This color is received. This is sent. Awesome. And uh, what else? Yeah, I think this is good. Title is also good. Slice is good. Spacing. Oh no. 60 was good. 55. Yeah, let's agree on uh, 50. No, not so much. I think, yeah, let's keep it 60 the way it was. So with that said, even this part is completed. Now quickly, let's check the, you know, some of the formatting over here. You see, this looks very well. I mean, all these look very well. Maybe in that case, this is more of a contrasting thing. So let's, uh, yeah, I'm going to copy this format and I'm going to try it over here. Yeah, this looks good. In fact, I can change this. Yeah, great. Yeah, I think this is looking good. In that case, for the uh, these title uh, category values, currently it's white. Let's change it to our LinkedIn view we have been using. Control V. Awesome. This is looking good. And I think yeah, it's already bolded. Yeah, bold is looking good. Uh, I think this is the longest. So maybe I'll keep this as is. Something more is maybe for the background. Now this is our last uh, attempt. Yeah, I think uh, we are almost done. So transparency, what if I put 20% transparency? Good. And uh, what if I put 30% transparency? I think 20 was good. Just making the final attempt. Or let's put in between 25. And if I copy this format into my here, the 30 was good. I'm going to do undo. I think this was still good. So in that case, let me change it to 20. And this doesn't look 20, but yeah, let me copy this and paste it over here. I think yeah, I like this. So I'm going to copy this again and paste it over here and mostly probably only the background is going to change here also i'm going to select this oh no sorry it's the other way select this copy the format paste it over here awesome select this copy the format paste it over here again select oh uh, yeah select this copy of not paste it over here these all look good although looks like uh yeah maybe for this chart the not a FIPS data format. Column is what I'm looking for. Grid like columns. Perfect. Go over here. Go over here. So, yeah, looking great. It's also color looking great. It's also color looking great. And it looks like these are interactive, meaning if I select manager, awesome. It will only show me the data for the 7014 manager. So again, it is here, it's still in 714. I think total connection is 710. And uh, yeah, this is how the total connections per month for manager only uh, appeared. And among the companies, yeah, this is 25 from Striker. Yeah, there are multiples uh, over here. I think same is the case with how, no, I think this did into this, so this isn't interacting. Same if I select back, it will go back to normal. Maybe if I select these ones, this is the way it is. And if I select these companies, okay, awesome. For these company, most of them are consultants, partner, project, and so on. And the necessary details are presented over here. So I'm going back. Let's change the format for these as well. Yeah. So again, I'm going to select format, paste, awesome. Then copy the format, paste. Copy the format, paste, copy the format, paste, and lastly, copy the format, paste. And uh, does it have a here also? Yeah, let's see. Copy the format, paste. Oops. In that case, I think the blue color we have to change. No, as we will do it. So going over here, font color menu. 
instead of white, I'm going to say control V. Awesome, let's see. Oh yeah, this is looking great. And on top of it, let's go and search for logo. LinkedIn logos. I think yeah, this is looking great. This is very well created. Dashboard, we did it. And now let's see, let's look for logo. I well, I doubt I have downloaded. If not, I will do it live here. So if I go into view, let's see. And then I think this is the logo we are wanting, but I think that's the whole page. This is the background we have used. Uh, no worries. Yeah, let's let's do a quick Google search for LinkedIn logos. LinkedIn L O G O. Again, I'm doing this live just to show you this is how it is done. So in future, if you're doing for any company, uh, this is exactly you'll be following. Uh, just keep in mind, you know, the logos that we select must be placed here as well as here. Yeah, I think those are the right places. Other maybe if you want to use empty spaces, you can. But again, I'll be selecting the logos in, in a manner that you know it will go with this color. So definitely this is more on a, a light bluish color. So uh, I'm okay to use these darker ones. Yeah. So let's make this say C more. I think maybe I'll use one long like the name LinkedIn and other side I will use the logo. So let me select this first. Yeah, and within this, yeah, this I will have a background that is uh, light. So I think maybe I'll go with this. Oh, awesome. This is looking great. Yeah, this is looking good. Okay, I won't uh, overthink, so maybe I'll just select this. And yeah, it takes uh, with this picture and right click and say save image as. Okay, it is asking where do I need to save my image? Oh, was, oh sorry, it's not saving it as an image, it's saving as a web page, which is not what I want. Uh, no worries, yeah, maybe I'll just get a snipping tool over here and select this entire thing. Awesome, Snake Away is created and I'll save it. Not the downloads, but let me go to the exact location teaching 2024 fall Power BI class. We are looking for LinkedIn analytics. Yeah, so LinkedIn logo L I N K E D I N L O G O 1. Awesome, this is one. And uh, let's let's pick while we are here. Oh, sorry, wrong page some news article awesome so while this is open let's go back yeah let's pick uh, one of the shorter one yeah something like this so this is the one this is the one. which one looks attractive i think yeah let's just go with maybe something that has a or maybe this is good let's pick this so here as well i won't overthink too much i will say new and uh, yeah, just select the entire thing. Oh no, this line came one more time. No worries. Yeah, this is perfect. I'm going to save it again. This will be our logo. Oh, so this is my obsidian logo. LinkedIn logo. Yeah, here is the LinkedIn logo one. So this will be our LinkedIn logo two. Sweet, yeah, so we saved these two logos and I'm going to minimize it, close this up. And yeah, in this, I'll go to home and within there, there should be a insert image. Yeah, insert, insert, not shape, image. Yeah, let's pull the LinkedIn logo one first. I'll say, okay, yeah, well, LinkedIn logo one is over here. Then I will do the formatting. I think, yeah, let's tag it over. Sweet, this is good. Maybe it's too big, so I'll squeeze it down a little. Hey, this is looking attractive. Same thing I will do for the LinkedIn second logo. So with an insert image, this logo open. Yeah, this got added. I'll resize it. Let's move it over here. So this color looks slightly different than the other, but I'm not going to worry a lot. But overall, this is what we did. So logo. Logo LinkedIn Analytics Dashboard. 
Now these, uh, yeah, visual six KPIs, these necessary visuals, and these are interactive. If I select CEO, these are the CEO connections I have. I click back. Chief, these are the chief connections I have. Again, same uh, messages received, messages sent. And uh, yeah, guys who endorsed me, you see as soon as I click this, the number changes. So yeah, this is the one. And then within Striker, this is the status of my connections added. Striker, SLB, self-employed, Halliburton, Baker, huge uh, invitation received and so on. So technically we created this uh, the dashboard. I hope you guys learned a lot. Uh, there was a lot we did uh, in this case. So hopefully you learned a lot and enjoy doing this uh, assignment with me. And again, for submission, yeah, please save this file and uh, attach the file uh, you will be uh, like yeah you have completed i'll open it and upgrade it up uh, then again always and always try publishing so that it is saved in your sharepoint so again hit publish from your home uh, my workspace select it is doing its own stuff awesome success and then i will be opening this Oops, it's opening on my other screen, so I'll move that screen over here. Here you go, awesome, yeah. So again, if you can, yeah, I think I know some of you are facing challenges, but again, if you can, I just share here, then type my name and copy link and paste that link, or I export, either uh, export as Excel, yeah, analyze in Excel or PowerPoint, I think these two, the data will be live. So again, PowerPoint and maybe upload that file that is okay. But yeah, these are a few ways I'm uh, showing you. I'll close this for now. I'll close this for now. With that, yeah, hope you guys uh, learned a lot from this assignment. Thank you so much for staying uh, with me throughout this assignment. You guys are doing fantastic. Please keep up your hard work. Uh, you guys are really awesome. Thank you so much. Have a good day.